What up, people? This is Tatiana Tarot up in the house. So happy to be back. Yes. Don't mind me a while. I'm putting on my earrings. It's been a hot minute. I had some time before attending to other things in my life. And I figured, let, let me just release a video because otherwise, I don't know when I'll be able to do one. And trust me, I'm trying to be as consistent with this. It literally, literally has been quite a moment because I've been putting out these video content, um, this video content with um, Emily. Emily the Voluptuous Witch, and I believe she's on vacay, so I have not been able to connect with her this week. Regardless, you won't get what you want. And um, I wanted to come through to give you the tarot energy forecast of the week. For the week of April 8th all the way to April 15th, um, really, really, really dope stuff. So if you're new, if you're tuning in, my name is Tatiana. I read the tarot, hence Tatiana Tarot. And basically what I do is that I pull out cards for the week. I pull out, I use the tarot cards to give us insight on what's going on subconsciously and consciously. And then at the end of the reading, I pull out an oracle card to kind of sum up the whole week and see what it is that we have in store for us, what energies we're going to be encountering, what we should be reflecting on, um, what we should or should not be avoiding, just to help us thrive a little bit more during this time. Uh, take what it is that you need and discard the rest. This is by no means something that's a, a prediction. It is fun. It's a fun tool uh, of empowerment, um, tool for self-awareness to just help you along your road in your personal journey. So um, normally I tell people to whip out a pen and paper because there's just so much information that's being thrown at us within these next 40 minutes and change that may may not resonate with you if you write it down it might it, you might find some information later down the road that kind of clicks and so if it's in front of your face it'll be easier for you to access so let us just all tune in and figure out what this week has in store for us i'm going to be using my writer weight deck here that i use all the time in my readings I see spirit and love and light for the highest good of all involved. Give us insight on this week. Monday, April 9th. I meant to say Monday, April 9th instead of April 8th. Monday, April 9th and Tuesday, the 10th. What information do we need to know from Monday, April 9th, Tuesday, the 10th, consciously? So a card already flew out. Hold on one second. Mmm. When cards fly out, that is a sign for me or tells me, excuse me, that there is something that we need to pay attention to. And being that, that I'm doing this for the collective, this is for all of us to be a little bit more savvy on. So Monday the 9th and Tuesday the 10th, Spirit, what do we need to know consciously? Okay, lots of wands. When we're dealing with the wand suit, this talks about fire. Excuse me, because you know, when I start ringing, I get this out of my face, all right? I get this out of my face here. All right, so wands talk, talks about fire. It talks about the action to do. It's a verb, essentially. And we're focusing on our passions, we're focusing on our ambitions, we're focusing on sexuality, we're focusing on that extra umph we need to bring forth manifestations into this world. What flew out of the deck is our conscious reminder for Monday the 9th and Tuesday the 10th. And so what that means is these things are going to be coming to light consciously. We're going to be mindful of these energies acting for us or this might be something that we know we need to do a little bit more to bring forth the results that we are seeking what flew out of the deck is um this one right here i don't know if you can see it the ace of wands ace of wands is all about manifestations it's all about initiation it is all about taking the leap and going forth and doing what you feel in your gut 
whatever it is that you need to be doing and taking action on it on an immediate basis. Ace of Wands is kind of like the slogan, just do it. Like the Nike slogan, you just do it. You know, a little bit, of, a little bit of day goes a long way. So it's really taking forth that emphasis and motivation that you need to put fire underneath your ass to get the ball rolling. Ace of Wands may be an unexpected opportunity that flies out of the sky. Hence this this hand here that's coming out of nowhere to offer you this stick of growth that has a lot of growth in it. Um, this is to say that you're filled with potential. You're filled with a je ne sais quoi that you need to go out there and start doing what it, whatever it is that you need to do. You need to start doing it because you won't discover what that potential and that growth is unless you put yourself out on the line. Um, Ace of Wands may mean that you are filled with, como se dice, you, and I'm trying not to sound so redundant, but essentially it's like you're filled with this gusto. You feel, you're filled with this passion that is giving you the extra boost to um, go the, go the mile, go the extra mile to, to, to take things to the next level, to get shit done essentially. And it makes sense because we're in Aries season. Aries is, um, the initiator. Aries is all about taking the plunge, starting things off for the new astrological year. So bear that in mind, excuse me, that Ace of Wands here is a, a very much a revolutionary card. Um, it's not passive by any means. It's not telling you to just stand on the sidelines and just wish your life away and start manifesting in your mind. This is, re this is requiring action. This is requiring sending emails. This is requiring waking up a, a little bit earlier. This is requiring, um, you know, jotting down notes, taking notes or, um, start planning things, start calling people, make it work, make it happen for yourself. Okay. Now, the other thing that we are seeing is the Queen of Wands. And the Queen of Wands is that bitch. She's bad about it. Queen of Wands plays no games. She's very fearless. She has this regal aura to her. I mean, she is a fire sign. This is not only um, exclusive to fire signs. It could be anyone. But it may be representing the need to exemplify this energy a little bit more. I never know what the fuck I should be looking at, whether it's the, the, the photo booth or the thing I'm going to be looking at my camera. Okay, so Queen's, Queen of Wands is basically communicating to us within the first days of the week that we need to go out there with a bang, that we need to exude the sense of confidence, the sense of fearlessness, the sense of I know what I'm doing, I know who I am, I know what I have to bring to the table. And also, a lot of people don't note this little side um, symbol in the Queen of Wands that, it, for me, it makes her one of my favorite characters. And this is the black cat here at the bottom. This makes her a little bit mystically inclined, or we can allude that she's a little bit of a witch. And so this is to say that you want to start uh, dabbling into your spiritual practices or whatever it is that you do to bring about the results that you're seeking or to help you bring about this aura of um, confidence, of security, of um, authority, power, empowerment, because this is all that the Queen of Wands embodies. Uh, she goes out there and gets things done. She doesn't wait for things to come to her. She doesn't wait for people to bring her ideas. She is an initiator in many ways. And she's very charismatic. She's very sweet. She's a social person. So this may require you to get out of the shell. Or, or this may require you to be like for tomorrow, for this whole week. Take that, take a challenge and be like, uh, what would my life look like if I were completely confident this whole week? If I were completely fearless this whole week? What would it look like? What would I do? How would I show up for myself? How would my business change? How would my career change? How would my romance change? How would my life, my relationships, my relationship to self change? And start acting in accordance to that challenge and see when it's next Sunday, the 15th, which is the new moon in, in Aries, otra vez, another fire. Very fiery this week. 
Thank God, Mercury retro Retrograde is almost over. We're so over it. This has been, our whole lives has been in shambles. Everybody has spoken to has been sick. Uh, Mercury Retrograde is claiming every damn cord in my house. Uh, I just got my laptop back. I just got my iPad back. I got a new cord for those things too. So we're over it. But all of this fire energy is to say that it's leading up for that full moon, excuse me, new moon in Aries. Which, you know, it takes about 21 days to develop a habit or to break a habit. So you want to already get into the mindset and the practice of, okay, what am I going to do to induce this change? Queen of Wands is what you need to bring out a little bit more, that ba-ba-boom. That I'm about it, about it. That I'm just going to do me and I'm going to celebrate me in every way, but I mean business. So that is what we're working for, working with consciously, subconsciously. We are going to see those aspects inside of ourselves or around ourselves that we're not quite aware of that are participating with the experiences that we're attracting, situations we're attracting, feelings we're attracting. Let's see. Subconsciously, what is going on? Monday the 9th and Tuesday the 10th. Okay, cards are just flying by, so I'm just going to take that. Okay, this kind of makes sense. Um, we are getting the Four of Cups. I'm going to have to sit my ass down and finally learn how to edit, but until, you, until I do, you're just going to take these videos and just enjoy them all right four of cups so four of cups is really interesting in the sense that we have this lazy dude or i'm just making up shit because we don't really know if he's lazy but he's just sitting in a tree pouting with his arms crossed being like okay i don't know what's going on uh i'm gonna think about it i'm not too sure he's all in his head space right that we can we can definitely see and he's got these three cups in front of him that are representing aspects of himself that he's already secure and 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 and, and knows how he is and, and 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 he's already established and so this is something that is very comfortable or comforting for him but this one cup is coming out of nowhere and as you can see this is a big theme in, in tarot is like the will of the universe, the will of God, the will, will of the most high coming out of nowhere and being like, ha. Hey. Um, we can say that this might be the answer to something that he has been seeking or uh, thinking about. Uh, it may be a sign that is resonating or, excuse me, is in front of his face, but he does not realize it. He does not see it. He does not notice it because he's too much in his head space. So bear in mind that there might be situations around you um, People that are being attracted to you, uh, scenarios that you're experiencing, um, or signs that you're missing because you're just not all quite there. With Whether that means you're lingering in the past, lingering in the future, or just too busy thinking about things that don't pertain to the present moment, you need to be focused, you need to be grounded, because it's going to hit you in the head with a stick. We got all these wants. You're going to need to take initiative on something this week because otherwise you wouldn't have gotten the Queen of Wands. You wouldn't have gotten such a powerful character that's all about that. You wouldn't have gotten the Ace of Wands, which is like, here, take the leap. Go. I'm giving you a stick of leadership. Now go with it. Four of Cups means don't try so hard. Don't sit in a tree and be like, hmm, how do I bring about this? What are the hows? What are the whys? You know, what are the outcomes? Just set the intention, set it from a pure place of being in your heart, open up for experiences to fall into your place and go just one step at a time. Try not to overanalyze, over rationalize things because then you're going to kill it. You're going to kill the moment. You're going to miss the whole picture. The universe is going to pass, go pass you on and go to Ricky I'll go to, uh, I'll go to Susie or Shaquanda, whoever. Whoever is awake and attentive and ready to receive, they're going to receive it. So you want to make sure that you're in that space to receive. Um, four cups can also represent the lack of getting out of your comfort zone. Uh, and that's a common theme in the tarot in and of itself. 
four four of cups it's like i don't know if i have what it takes to reach out for that cup and go for it this may be something very unexpected that falls in your lap that's very serendipitous to what it is that you need at that moment to thrive or to succeed um or just to do and, and bring about the result that you're seeking it could just be like wow this could not come at a more opportune moment but the fear is setting in um the hesitation setting in and you just attach to that tree like you're a squirrel that's not gonna work that's not gonna work for you and subconsciously that can screw things up just mind be mindful that this may be a motive or this may be a feeling or you're digging in subconscious okay so you're not quite aware that this is within you or this is this is bringing about results around you okay now for the center of the week, the 11th and the 12th, Spirit, give us give us the insight on what's going on consciously Wednesday the 11th and Thursday the 12th. What's going on consciously Wednesday the 11th, Thursday the 12th? What's going on subconsciously Wednesday the 11th, Thursday the 12th, subconsciously? Okay, I'm going to... So consciously in the middle of the week, in the beginning of the week, we got, we hit it off with a bang. We're getting things started in the middle of the week. We are consciously um, working with the queen of cups. Queen of cups is really, really rad in the sense that I see her as a visionary. Let me hold this up before some of y'all start clucking. Um, queen of cups. She's staring at this cup, okay? A lot of people don't really realize that water gazing is a form of divination. And so I really do see the Queen of Cups as a person who is a seer. First of all, she's ruling the realm of emotion. She's ruling the realm of feeling. A person who is very much in tune with their empathic skills is a seer in some way. They can read people. They can read their body language. They can read... The energy that they're projecting or that they're not projecting. Everything is up for interpretation. Everything is a symbol or a sign or a message if you perceive it to be. So, Queen of Cups is the lady. She's the maiden of love. She's the goddess of love. She's a cool card to get if you're like in your feelings and you're like, oh my God. Is this going to happen with my boo? Queen of Cups is like, yes, I'm fabulous. Um, I am living my best life through my heart. I am really tapping into those heartstrings and I'm indulging. And I am, you know, just feeling the feelings and going with it. Queen of Cups could be very super artistic, can be super creative, can be um, that that person that you go to to talk to your emotions. Um, could be a, a lover, could be a mother, could be a best friend with those sort of intentions, but knows their boundaries, okay? Because some of you try one like that. Um, but to say that the Queen of Wands is in our conscious view, this may even bring up some love vibrations. It could be that your... Um, if you're open for this. It could be, yes, I'm open for what love has to bring, but also I am very much on my P's and Q's in terms of my intuition, in terms of my third eye and my sight. I know what's going to happen before it happens, or I have all these hunches and these inclinations that are telling me, mm, this is coming up on the horizon for me. If you were to receive the Queen of Cups, I would say in the center of the week, Start pulling out your cards, seeing what the cards tell you for whatever questions you may have in your mind or whatever concerns you do. Maybe that you're serving others this way. Um, maybe you might want to make yourself a little mojo bag, put in some stones, put in some some bones, put in some um, symbols that will help you to decipher and interpret the meanings when you throw them it's a very hoodoo tradition to be throwing the bones and interpreting that for yourself um but it's divination so queen of cups is telling you to pay attention to your emotions to put it first to interpret that to interpret that through your heart space interpret that to your 
gut. What that means is paying attention to what your heart is telling you as if it is a brain. Not thinking so much rationally, but going and tapping in and being like, why do I feel this way? Mm, tell me what's going on. And just shutting yourself off and, and kind of finding some sacred space to be one with your emotions, you know? Um, subconsciously, for the 11th and the 12th, we are getting the five of cups. I actually like this in the subconscious position because this is telling me now that if you are receiving the queen of cups in the conscious position, you are analyzing or there's emotion coming up that has been stifling you, that's that's been limiting you in some way or it's making you sad or it's making you feel a type of way about something that's uncomfortable. Five of Cups is is to wallow in your own mess or to to feel too excessively sad or angered or guilt or frustrated or or shamed or just to be um, wallowing in this emotion of negativity instead of realizing that there is still a way out of it or you need to just pick your head up and continue progressing. That there are mistakes that happen, there's loss that happens, but that doesn't end there. The Five of Cups will think that it ends there. The Five of Cups will say, shoot, why did this happen to happen to me? Or, uh, you know, what's going on? Everything I do is a mistake. Or, uh, you know, oh, God, I, I can't possibly move on from this. That's it. I screwed up. And it's a very self-deprecating, depressing energy. But there is a resolution here. And what's going on is that you three of the cups have fallen and spilled. Not all of the cups. And you're not being grateful. You're not being grateful. You're not being present. And you're not snapping out of it. Because you don't realize that there is a bridge here and an emotional uh, river that you have to cross. Okay, when we're crossing any bodies of river, we're doing any rituals with water um, or the rivers or the ocean. That's an opportunity to release your your energy, to release your emotional energy and and your emotional body, and to cleanse. And so he needs to move on past it. It's not necessarily that he needs to forget about it. It's not necessarily that he needs to rush. And, you know, say, okay, it is what it is, bye. No, it's, it's, there's a difference between honoring the emotions, feeling the feelings fully, and then moving on to the next chapter in your life as opposed to repressing and resisting what is going on, being too harsh on yourself, not forgiving, not being compassionate with the situation, and just, just stabbing yourself over and over, being very um, depleting of your time and your energy and, and just... Mm, yeah. So subconsciously, if this is what's going on, this may be coming up in, in, in your emotions, in the way that you act, in, in, in the people around you. You may be exhausted. You may be, this may be going on with people that you know. And so here is the Queen of Cups. You might want to whip out some cards or you might want to go to a reader or you might want to serve as a healer and a conduit. Um, to understand what's going on, to get more insight. Or you might want to tap in and be like, okay, if this is what's going on now. What am I to, how can I learn from these lessons so I can kind of carve out the future that I desire? Or can mean like, what can I do to treat myself to make myself feel better? Queen of Cups is about luxury, is about love, is about abundance. Think of it a, a, a bit, um, think of it as a Venus card. Think of it as a time for you to really indulge in yourself and take care of yourself in ways that you have not been able to take care of yourself before. Um, self care, emotional self care could be time for a little banito, cleansing, purification time. What the fuck? All these people kind of came out of the card looking weird as hell. Um, <laughs> um, mm, uh, focus. Um, yes. So, Queen of Cups. Uh, what was I gonna say? Also, 
Queen of Cups can be analyzing these emotions, okay, in a very mature manner. She's not going to repress anything any longer. So if anything is coming up, she's going to invite it with open arms and saying, okay, why is this coming up for me at this time? Mercury retrograde, what is what is being brought to me from my past lovers? What do I need to heal? What do I make, need to make part with? What do I need to cut the cords energetically with? Who do I need to write to? Who do I need to just block? Um, you will know your, your heart and your emotions will tell you everything. So just pay attention and don't negate your own wisdom. So let's see the wisdom that's coming out for this weekend. The 13th, the 14th and the 15th, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, 13th, 14th, 15th. What are we needing to know consciously? What do we need to know subconsciously, 13, 14, 15th of this week? What do we need to know subconsciously? What's working around this that we might not be aware of? Okay, good. Oh, another card fell out. Ain't you lucky today? The spirits like you guys. They like this crew that is watching. Okay, Ashe. Namaste. Um, this is a good collection of cards. I was a little anxious to see what we were going to be pulling today. It's been a hot minute. Um, consciously, we have the, the Six of Swords for the weekend. The 13th of the 15th. Six, excuse me, Six of Wands, not Six of Swords. Ooh, see, Six of Swords is still talking about that emotional journey. You have to get in that boat and get over it. It actually speaks of something more positive. It's saying that you're already embarking on that emotional journey. But you have this wall of swords in front of your face that is allowing you to see things from a very limited perspective. Get out of your own way, essentially, is the message of the Six of Swords. And I don't take anything as an accident. That was a Freudian slip for a reason. You had to listen to the, the message of the Six of Swords. So Six of Wands is what I was really talking about. Six of Wands means that you're about it, about it. And I know that's been a th word that I've been throwing about a lot because it's a fucking awesome word. But it is to say that you're here to claim yours and you're here to command and conquer. Because the Six of, of, of Wands, the backstory between that is that he's come from war and he disappeared. He went to war and nobody knew when he was going to come back or nobody knew where the hell this guy went. And so here he's coming back as the Six of Wands, back into his hometown, feeling confident, feeling like, okay, I knew, I, I won this battle. I know who I am as a result. I've gone through the muck and the mire. I've gotten beaten up. I pulled myself back out again. It's like that Cardi B song. What's that first song? Up 10, get up 10. Fell down nine times, get up 10. Whoop, whoop. So that is basically talking about the not, the Six of so I was going to say the nine of wands. Get out of your own way. Nine of wands is a blockage. Nine of wands is literally a character that's like, I don't know. Can I? Can I not? I'm so afraid. I have a wall up. Okay, so this is the time where you guys get to be like, ah, walls down. Okay, this is who I truly am. I'm ready to confront my own limitations. I'm ready to confront my own challenges. I'm ready to confront myself because really what we're doing is just confronting mirrors of ourselves, right? But going back to the original poor card that does not have its shine today, Six of Wands is to say that you're free. You feel unbounded. You feel supported by maybe friends and family here in the universe. And victory and success is yours in that it's inevitable. Your path is leading you there. Okay, so you may be walking the walk, talking the talk, traveling, doing the things, and you will start seeing the rewards. Now, subconsciously, we are receiving the Knight of Pentacles. And the card that fell out, which was the Page of Wands, okay? They're all cards of movements, six of, of, of wands on a horse. Knight of Pentacles on a horse. Page of Wands. Not on a horse, but he's about to venture out. He's progressive. So 
Look at the Knight of Pentacles, okay? He's very slow and steady wins the race. He's very secure. He's like, I have this beautiful golden star to offer you guys. Um, subconsciously means you're ready. You are ready to go out there. You're ready to make your move. You're ready to present whatever it is that you need to present. Whether it's a new lifestyle, new career, new boo, new you, new way of thinking, new way of acting and maneuvering in this lifetime. Knight of Pentacles does not want to fuck up on the road to becoming a king because then he will take longer in doing that. Or he might even lose the status that he has. So this is about being very sure of why you're doing what you're doing. Of, okay, am I acting out of impulse and ego or am I following my gut instincts? Is this in alignment with who I am? Um, am I resonating with this? Knight of Pentacles can mean that there's incoming money. So you're attracting awesome opportunity or wealth. And wealth is not just one dimensional. It's not only financial. It could be wealth of health, wealth of friends, wealth of love, wealth of this new um, person that you're becoming. Nine of Pentacles, Knight, 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 Con, yes. So I keep on saying something that is not here. Nine of Pentacles. Subconsciously means that you've been putting in the work for some time, okay? You've been putting in the work. You've been doing the work, but you know what? It's time to take a step back and celebrate you. Don't forget the Queen of Cups that came out in the middle of the card. Celebrate you in whatever way, whether it's taking yourself out to dinner, buying yourself new beautiful things, getting yourself a book, taking that course that you want, booking that flight, getting on that phone and calling that person for relief. Uh, t sleeping extra time, uh, taking a bubble bath, whatever it is, Nine of Pentacles is saying that, bam, your riches are, are accumulating as a result of your hard work. The rewards are here. They're streaming in and you will need to take a break because there's bigger things on the horizon. Nine is not the only digit. We've got 10 to go to go for work towards, but you're here. You know who you are. You know that you can put in the work and you're not doing it in vain. Knight of Pentacles is to say that now subconsciously you're kind of, this is kind of like the Capricorn, slow but sure. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to hustle. Money might be coming in. Again, like you're attracting this wealth. It, um, this might be a move for some of you. This might be traveling. Also, Page of Wands. Page of Wands is like, what's out there? I am actualizing my greatness. I know I can do all of the things. Now, what out of all of the things do I want to do and how do I want to do it? And I'm hungry for creativity. I'm hungry for expansion. That is all about the Page of Wands. So, so internally, subconsciously, you're making moves. Whether you realize it or not, you might be longing for something very different that you, than what you've ever had before. If you've been a mathematician your whole life and all of a sudden you catch yourself writing poetry, you catch yourself hiking or making pottery, something different for you is in store. Page of Wands is like, okay, what's my... You're never going to know what you're good at unless you go out there and do it. And so the Page of Wands is all about that. And sometimes he wants to be exposed to different cultures, different belief systems. Let me read this book on that. I don't know anything about it. Let me just read it. Let me see how it I can incorporate it into my life, how it makes me a better person, how it makes me progressive. Um, progress, excuse me. Page of Wands is a very exciting character. It's that person that you want to, very spontaneous, is on the go. Let's, oh, let's go, let's go take this class. Oh, let's go to this club tonight. I usually stay at home with the babies all the time. Let's go to the club tonight, all right? Um, oh, oh, let's, you know... I've been making freaking arroz con gandules and, uh, and, and chuletas my whole life. Let's go get some Vietnamese food, you know? <laughs> Switching it up. Page of Wands is that exciting person. And you're becoming this. And you're, you're attracting situations that allow you to become this. And now you're just going to open your heart, okay? Not, not wallow in the who, what, when, where, whys. Um, and the mistakes. And the sadness and whatever lower energy that has been keeping you behind. But really just expanding into this horizon. And now a really, really interesting because we got this 
this is for the weekends with this is for the 13th to the 15th the 15th is the new moon in in Aries that I've spoken about before so the page of wands is very much in alignment with this page of wands is like a trailblazer Knight of Pentacles makes it even better because the page of wands is so impulsive and the Knight of Pentacles is like okay I want to do this but I want to make sure that it's safe for me to do that. It's not stupid. It's not a waste of my time. So you're good either way because your, your heart and your gut knows what it's doing. You need to trust yourself during this time. Six of Pentacles. Six of, uh, six of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles is teaching. It's a card of teaching. It is a card that is either a teacher coming into your life. Or you are meant to serve as a teacher. You're meant to get more education. But you should only be participating in that which is going to feed you and vice versa. Reciprocation. Okay. But I was going to say six of wands. Okay. This card does not have its shine. Pobrecito. Six of wands. Whatever it is that you're getting into. Whatever it is that you want to launch after this Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde goes direct. I think after the 15th or on the 15th on the new moon, don't quote me. I'm not an astrologer, new moon in Aries. It might be wrong, but I think it goes direct on the 15th. Regardless, you got this go energy. Bam. What all this stuff that's been coming up this whole time that I didn't have the right, the green light to do. My shit's been breaking. Now it's all fixed. What can I do now that everything is direct? Bam, go do it. Go have fun. Web out town. Now let's get some clarity through the oracle cards, which I don't have much of, which I need to get more of. You can only have so much. I did, before I moved to New Orleans, I gave a lot of my oracle cards away to my friends. Why? Because I didn't use them. Do I regret it? No. Let's see. Isis Oracle. What do we have to say for the collective? Isis Oracle. What's the message this week? What's the message this week? Oh, hell no. I'm not reading all those cards, but you're going to get this today. Hold on. Yeah, that ain't happening. However, you are getting this card. Proper burial for freedom, sacrifice to Osiris, Lord of the Dead. Okay? In order for life to flow and express itself, that which belongs to the world of death must be released. There is nothing to be gained and everything to be lost by trying to hold on to that which no longer serves us, which is better left to die, though it takes great spiritual courage and trust to allow this to happen. Osiris, Lord of the Dead, guides you now to release that which no longer needs to be a part of your life so that you may be free. You need to see something through and let it go so that you are free from it. You may or may not be fully aware of what this is, but your energy field is somehow haunted by the past or drained by attachments that are no longer necessary for your growth. This could be anything from a past relationship to dreams or visions that may have encouraged you in past times but are not re relevant for where you are going now. It might also be the spirit of a lost child or loved one, someone who has passed on or left your life, or the ghost of expectations unmet from past hopes and dreams. There is so much beauty and fullness waiting for you right now, beloved initiate. There is no need to further hold on to the past. Do not be scared. You are supported so utterly and completely in this deep healing Release now and all involved will be benefit from the healing change. It is not abandoning what you have loved to give it to to give it full and proper burial. It is in fact honoring and allowing what you are releasing to return to the pure light and love of source. It is spiritual freedom for you and what you have released, which is the destiny to all which of all life will eventually return. It takes great trust, but if you allow Osiris to help you, you will realize that in letting go, rebirth and growth is very possible. You may experience grief, anger, fear, freedom, and a sense of relief or a combination of all these things as you move to let go and allow proper burial to take place. 
Do not be afraid of any of these feelings for they will pass naturally when allowed to just flow. These feelings will actually fertilize new life and allow you to become more of who you are in truth. Trust that Osiris will love and protect that which is released into his care through the world of death. Death too becomes new life. There is nothing to fear and everything to gain. Ashe. Thank you, spirit. Thank you, Isis Oracles. Thank you, um, Rider Waite Smith. You can get the Isis Oracle. This is by Alana Fairchild. I know this might be in reverse when you see it. You can get this on Amazon or Google Isis Oracle by Alana Fairchild to see where they sell it near you or aside from uh, uh, Amazon where you can get it yourself. And this was a pleasure. It's been a hot minute. I hope that this serves you so, so, so well. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in to my cookie ass. I definitely miss all of you guys. It's been very, very wild roller coaster, fun roller coaster, busy roller coaster. Um, I will be in Austin, Texas on the 14th and the 15th of this month for a tarot and oracle expo. Please come see me. You can sign up for my workshop. It is in a location called Nature's Treasure. Nature's Treasure. Google it. And you can sign up for the workshop on Nature's Treasure's uh, website. I will also be doing in-person readings there at that expo. First come, first serve. And also vending my Orisha specialty candles and my conjure oils. Okay? So if you're interested and you cannot make it to Austin, Texas, and you want to book a session with me, I now have a scheduling software up. So, so, so easy. So, so, so not archaic than the old way I was doing. You can go to my Instagram and click on the link of my bio. My Instagram is Tatiana Tarot. And that is Tatiana with two N's. T-A-T-I-A-N-N-A. -N -N Tarot is T-A-R-O-T. Or you can go to my website, www.myurbanillumination.com. Click on the work with me. Then click the book here scheduling link and um you can connect with me via google hangout skype phone facetime and if you want an in-person session with me outside from austin texas you're local to new orleans you're coming to new orleans shoot me an email to make sure that i have availability okay and I will let you know, and you can proceed by booking on my website as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You guys are so dope. I wish you the best. Mucho, 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 mucho besos. Y bendiciones.